Welcome to the Creative Pen Podcast. I'm Joanna Penn, thriller author and creative entrepreneur, bringing you interviews, inspiration, and information on writing, publishing options, and marketing ideas for your book. You can find the episode show notes, your free author blueprint, and lots more information at thecreativepen.com. And that's pen with a double N. And here's the show. Hello creatives, I'm Joanna Penn and this is episode number 356 of the podcast. And since this goes out on 1st of January 2018, Happy New Year and wishing you all a creative and successful 2018 ahead and I hope we can continue the writer's journey together. So today I'm looking back at my themes and goals and failures for 2017, as well as some overarching focus for 2018 and my specific goals, with the intent that it helps you with looking back at your creative year and also forward into what you want to achieve. And I always put this stuff out in public, so it's all written down on the blog. Um, The 2017 stuff is on the 31st of December and all my goals are on today, the 1st of January, uh, blog post and show notes. So you can always go check there for evidence and to add your own because uh, several people join me every year and and document their own goals there. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that. So a quick introduction today. Uh, Today's show is sponsored by The Healthy Writer. (laughs) This is a bit of a theme at the moment, don't you think, over the new year? Uh, It's out now in ebook and print formats. Uh, Reduce your pain, improve your physical and mental health and build a writing career for the long term. Go on, turn a new page in your health journey in 2018. The Healthy Writer available on all the usual ebook and print stores. Right, uh, let's get on with the roundups. So this is a roundup of my 2017 writing goals and lessons learnt uh, at the end of the year. So I was having lunch with an old friend recently and actually reminisced about the days when I used to clock watch at the day job I hated when every minute just crawled past. And it's quite different now because the year seems to turn so fast and time runs away. And my main concern is how to make more of it all and how to write all the stories in my head and how to help and empower more authors, how to travel and see more amazing places and how to read and watch and listen and experience more. And I I don't know about you, but you know, I'm, I'm just, I just want to do more. <laughs> so it's all about, I guess, having to cut out things in order to achieve the things we want to. And I'll come on to that in the 2018 goals. But it has been another amazing year and I continue to be grateful for every day I can make a living with my writing. So thank you so much for being a part of my journey through buying my books and courses, using my affiliate links on the website, supporting the podcast on Patreon, coming to my events and through spreading the word about the site and my books and courses. So I hope to continue being a part of your author journey as we move into 2018. Okay, so I'm going to consider some of my sort of overarching themes from 2017 first, and then I'll get into the goals that I had and whether I met them or why I fell short. So my first big theme is the rise and rise of collaboration. Uh, So I've co-written books before. I wrote Risen Gods with Jay Thorne in 2015, and we also did a sort of meta non-fiction book on co-writing a book. And It felt experimental a few years back, but in 2017, collaboration and co-writing has really come of age. Uh, Indies are doing short-term projects, but also longer-term collaborations within new worlds or non-fiction collaborative series. So, of course, Johnny, Sean and Dave at Sterling and Stone blazed an early trail with collaboration. And now Michael Anderley is leading a merry band of writers in his Cthurian universe. Michael set up the 20 Books to 50K Facebook group, which I'm sure many of you know, and they are now doing live events. They did the first one in Las Vegas in November, and I'll be at the London event in February 2018. And of course, uh, Jay Thorne, along with Zach Bohannon, is actually doing Authors on a Train. (laughs) and helping authors co-write now, which is awesome. 
Also this year, two of the major problems of co-writing have been solved. So it's easier to co-write um, these days. Bundle Rabbit has a collaboration engine for payment splitting instead of one of the authors having to do the accounting. And that is a huge deal. Uh, Book Funnel allows the management of the uh, ARCs, uh, the advanced reader copies, and also side loaning of ebooks and now um, works together with sales and uh, Payhip and I think Payhip anyway, I can't remember, lots of other ways to sell direct. So essentially we are getting the uh, all the tools we need to do this. I've taken collaboration to a new level in 2017 and this year I co-wrote five books. Four of those were not even in my 2017 goals, which is kind of hilarious. So um, I wrote, uh, co-wrote The Healthy Writer with Dr. Ewan Lawson, which just came out. Um, also, uh, and that wasn't planned this time last year, uh, American Demon Hunter's Sacrifice, which I co-wrote with Jay Thorne, Zach Bahan and Lindsay Broker on the train from Chicago to New Orleans in, in May, which was amazing. That was planned this time last year. And then also I've done three uh, Summerfield Village sweet romance novels uh, with my mum under the pen name Penny Appleton, which I'll come back to in a minute. But um, basically, they were not planned at all. <laughs> I knew my mum was writing, but didn't really know what that would turn into. I've actually learned a lot from editing other people's work and also about writing more with other people's opinions and ideas in mind, uh, which I guess is the collaboration bit. I've learned to let stuff go and relax a bit <laughs> to not be such a control freak or something like that. I mean, it is interesting with my mum. There are things that I put my foot down with and there are other things that I'm like, yeah, that's not a big deal. I'll, I'll let that go. And, and some ideas that I really care about and others that... Um, I incorporate into the story. So I think I've learned to be a bit gentler with other people and perhaps also with myself. Uh, I've also never been very good at celebrating my successes and publishing a book now is a bit of a non-event, to be honest. Uh, I love the creation process and as soon as the book is out in the world, I'm, I'm on to the next one and I'm always excited about whatever the next book is. Um, but through the co-writing, I've been able to celebrate with my co-authors. And also, uh, for example, you know, taking my mum out for champagne when our books come out and taking pictures and seeing the delight on her face uh, rekindles my own excitement at another addition to my body of work. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, collaborative projects are common in other industries, music, gaming, film and TV in particular. And we all already collaborate with, um, you know, when we work with professional editors, cover designers, marketing people, um, you know, graphic designers, website people. Basically, we already do this, but I think we're going to see more and more collaboration and co-writing in the indie community in 2018. I think it's a big theme. Also, um, one of the things, and I, I wanted to put this here, I wanted to call back to it for the sake of a roundup, but the indie author business model has stabilised, at least in the mature digital markets of US, UK, Australia and Canada. Now, um, I talked about this back in podcast episode 347, so I'm not going to go into it in detail, but basically we have everything we need to run a global, digital, scalable online business as author entrepreneurs with a business model that is working for more and more authors, which is pretty exciting. But this stabilisation means everyone is a publisher now and there are more creators out there and more coming. But of course, we should celebrate this because every person who writes a book will read and buy far more books than they will ever produce. So we can actually become a self-sustaining industry if we encourage everyone to write a book. <laughs> but the mature markets do feel a little crowded in some genres, and we're in this phase before mobile and digital really take off in developing digital markets. So it does feel like a calm period before the next big shift, a time to bed down your processes, grow your backlist by writing more, build relationships, make sure you have sustainable health and create practices, make the most of your intellectual property by expanding into other products like print and look to position yourself for the next phase of growth. This levelling out is reflected in the stabilisation of my own business model, but as I am a change junkie, I will need to mix it up in 2018 or I'm going to get bored and I am feeling the itch already. Uh, my processes are now pretty honed and I really am, I'll talk about 2018 soon, but uh, you know, I really am kind of looking for, for the next stage of, of my own career. It's also good to remember that companies that don't change with the times find themselves dying off, so we can't become complacent. 
There will continue to be shakeups within publishing as we are now essentially a tech industry and the reinvention never stops. Fun times indeed. Another theme is the changing entertainment environment. So I wrote an article last month about how I read and how I buy books and how that has changed over the years. I've also been reflecting on my own entertainment preferences over the holiday period, looking back over the year for what has stood out for me and what I have raved about to others. I have been especially talking about The Crown, especially season two, um, which is a Netflix um, series, apparently one of the most expensive series ever. Um, and of course, being British, I'm I'm well aware of the royal family and I am, I guess I'm a royalist. I mean, I, I do love the royal family. I think they do great things for our tourist industry. <laughs> Um, and the Queen works super hard. I mean, she really does. Um, but I've been raving about season two because of the masterful way the creative team told the family drama. And if you write memoir, it is incredible because they weave the idea of what is known to be true with storytelling, uh, also character development with plot, which especially with the character of Philip, I think they've done incredibly well and foreshadowing what I know is ahead based on uh, the history of the royal family. So I've, I've, for writers and people who want to write memoir, I've been really recommending The Crown. I also love The Handmaid's Tale, Game of Thrones, American Gods, Stranger Things 2, Jessica Jones and Bright, which only came out last week and I really enjoyed. <laughs> um, these are mostly dark fantasy stories that I can sink into and also share an experience with my husband. And this is something that I think is very important because most of us as readers have an experience on our own and family experiences or relationship experiences often need to be more than a book Um, and Jonathan and I don't read the same types of books and we don't listen really to the same audio books either so um, you know by having family time and together time watching things together is important so I also realized this year that I used to know when books were coming out like I would say oh yeah the um, whatever new book by I guess I did know when Dan Brown was coming out, (laughs) Um, but I used to be more aware of pre-orders and launch dates for books. Um, But now I know when my favourite series box set is dropping on Netflix or Amazon Prime. And I can either be ashamed to admit this or embrace it as part of the change in the entertainment environment in general, because it's not just me. And this is going to shape my 2018 because I'm returning to the idea of adapting my stories into screenplays so that perhaps they can reach more audiences and potentially start thinking beyond even just the 2D screen or the flat screen into what might be coming for augmented reality, virtual reality, gaming, uh, all of that type of thing. So more on this in the 2018 goals. I have read a lot this year. Um, I've uh, my novel of the year is *The Power* by Naomi Alderman, which is fantastic. Um, and I've put some other books, uh, listed some other books on um, the website. Um, but I've also listened to a lot of nonfiction and bought a lot of print nonfiction. And I also bought a reading chair, so I will sit in my reading chair and um, you know to get away from my desk. I have spent a lot of time at my desk, and I also write in a cafe, so I wanted a dedicated place to read and I I have put that into place Um, but things have definitely changed so question for you how have you consumed content in 2017 and how is that different to previous years Okay, so how did I do with my specific 2017 goals? First of all, the Creative Pen website and podcast. Uh, The podcast is now heading towards episode 360, and I've even done a few in between episodes focused on the author business. The audience continues to grow, and we're now over 2.2 million downloads. So thank you for listening. Um, Thank you also for all your Patreon support, and thank you to the corporate sponsors we have in Kobo Writing Life, Ingram Spark, and Drafter Digital, all companies I use myself and recommend. So I am, uh, well, at the beginning of 2017, I said I would redesign the creative pen. I did create a test environment and start trying out some other themes. But to be honest, after almost 10 years, it's my 10 year anniversary in in 2018, it is such a huge piece of work that I backed away, preferring to keep creating new things rather than revamp the old 
So uh, we added an old post warning to articles over three years old, as well as focusing on creating landing pages and also using using scheduling to send traffic to evergreen articles on pages as opposed to older posts. We've done quite a bit on branding and colours and are revamping the YouTube channel and the older posts. So This is an important thing because as technology moves on, we all have to review the tools we use because new providers emerge offering better functionality. And this was the focus of the first couple of weeks of December. We moved email providers to ConvertKit. um, And I am an affiliate of ConvertKit because it's awesome. And the reason I moved over is because it has the best options for both new authors and established businesses. So um, if you want to see what I'm doing, I actually recorded a new set of tutorials tutorials on how to set up your website, how to set up a theme, a mobile optimized theme, and also how to set up your email list. You can find that at thecreativepen.com forward slash author website. This will make my email easier to manage going forward. And uh, I'm really excited about that. So I did cut down my speaking in 2017, but I still managed to speak in Australia and New Zealand, Scotland, London and Oregon in the USA. I will be cutting down my speaking even more in 2018. It's one of those things that um, I... I appreciate so much the ability to do it. And when I do it, I say, I should do this more. In the heat of the moment, I'm like, I should do more speaking. And then I come away and I'm exhausted. And I realise that um, that time has gone. And it's I just find it too much. And as I said, I want to create more. And I feel like speaking is such a short, uh, you know, I can give benefit to people, but it doesn't last long enough. So, you know, I want to write more books, basically. Okay, other things I said I would do. Curl Up Press. uh, We set up Curl Up Press, a small press for the print publishing side of things. It's not open to submissions and I have no intention of publishing other people except those I co-write with, at least for the moment. We moved over to Ingram Spark and removed all of the extended distribution from CreateSpace and now use CreateSpace with Ingram Spark. I'm also using KDP Print for the Sweet Romance. Um, we also added new formats like workbooks and large print for the Sweet Romance. So there are two print editions for the Penny Appleton books. There, well, there's an ebook, there's a, a normal size print, and then there's a large print. So that's pretty cool. I will be doing a blog post on large print soon. We have a website, curluppress.com, and Jonathan did some courses on intellectual property rights and contracts. And uh, we've really learned a lot about intellectual property rights this year, which is fantastic. Feel much more empowered in that area. Uh, yes, what else? Okay, nonfiction books as Joanna Penn. I did How to Market a Book 3rd Edition, which turned out to be a much bigger job than expected. Uh, It took about three times as long to do it as I thought it would, because so much had changed. And that was fascinating. Um, So that came out around July 2017. So I would probably expect to do another one in 2019, maybe 2020, and things will probably have changed again. (laughs) I also managed to get um, the audiobook editions of The Successful Author Mindset, How to Make a Living with Your Writing and How to Market a Book, the third edition, all out in audio. Uh, They were produced professionally, so I just proofed it. Um, But those all made their costs back pretty quickly. So thank you if you bought any of the audiobooks. And of course, you can check those out uh, on Audible and uh, the website. So I won't be doing any more fiction audio for the, for the short term, at least. Uh, I'm going to be focusing more on the non-fiction audio as I'm getting that investment back very fast. Um, fiction listeners are price and length sensitive and are used to professional actors narrating fiction, which means the quality needs to be extremely high, whereas non-fiction listeners often just want useful information and generally aren't price or length sensitive. So um, shorter audiobooks, which non-fiction usually is are cheaper to produce so you can make your money back faster. So uh, I'm definitely, yeah, not not necessarily doing any more fiction audio for 2018. Uh, I shall review the situation as time goes on. Um, The Healthy Writer is now out and co-written with Dr. Ewan Lawson. And I'm very proud of it. And thank you to everyone. We uh, did hit some bestseller list. We did get our orange banner um, in the Australian store. And I said to Ewan, I was like, "Um, this actually makes you an internationally bestselling author, which is cool. 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm having a lot of problem with my Facebook ads account at the moment. I've been shut down twice <laughs> in the last two weeks. Um, somebody tried to hack my account. So I haven't been able to do Facebook ads. So it's kind of hilarious to do a launch without the ad platform that I've been using. <laughs> but there you go. But The Healthy Writer um, has been another one of my nonfiction books this year. I've also been much more healthy this year. So I'm going to continue that in 2018. I did commit to doing a hardback premium print journal in 2017. Um, I did investigate this to the point of choosing the cover material, but what I wanted would have been really expensive. Um, the lie flat aspect, you know, if you open the book and then it lies flat, um, that actually makes a book very pricey. Um, and that is non-negotiable in a journal that I would personally use. Um, I did, I might have gone ahead anyway with something, but then I discovered that journals, especially plain paper journals, which is what I like, are counted as stationary, not books. So they attract VAT in the UK, meaning the finances would have been a right pain. <laughs> so I decided against it. Um, I use personally use and recommend Moleskin and Luke Term journals, um, but I will be having Joel Friedlander, the book designer, on in 2018 to talk about the premium journal he has just produced. So it clearly can be done, just not easily. And it's interesting because John Lee Dumas uh, came on the show in January 2017 to talk about his journal. And then I heard Pat Flynn on uh, Smart Passive Income talk about failing to do a journal like me. So it's kind of interesting how, depending on your guidelines as to what you actually want, uh, that will really depend on whether you can do it. So thriller and dark fantasy fiction as JF Penn. Possibly the biggest realisation for me this year came in New Orleans when Lindsay Baroka said to me, you know, you're a fantasy author, right? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm a thriller writer. And she's like, yeah, right. Um, you can be a fantasy thriller writer. Uh, that's completely fine. Or a thriller writer with fantasy elements. But one of the biggest issues with being an indie author writing cross genre is not knowing the right place to put our books and falling down the gaps between established genres. So I write what I'm inspired to write. I very much do not control my muse when it comes to fiction. And uh, so... I write on the edge of thriller, dark fantasy, supernatural crime. You could call some of it Christian fantasy, uh, even a touch of horror in parts. Um, so, but all of my stories have aspects that are not technically real. <laughs> so perhaps this does put me more into fantasy than thriller. And let's face it, every thriller fest, I am added to the panel with the witches and the shifters, <laughs> even though I'm not writing witches or shifters yet. Um, so I'm still trying to decide whether to redo my JF Penn brand with a fantasy edge as opposed to a thriller vibe, or whether I just keep writing and see what happens along the way. It's tough to know what to do, something I will be pondering in 2018. But one thing is for sure, I don't fit in a box. <laughs> <laughs> um, other highlights include I was a finalist in the Thriller Fest Awards for Best Ebook Original for Destroyer of Worlds, and my friend and wonderful writer James Scott Bell won. But hey, I can now call myself an award nominated author. And I wrote earlier this year about my conflicting thoughts on wanting to win an award, uh, the trials of comparisonitis, and the need for validation. I published End of Days, Arcane number nine, which I particularly enjoyed the serpent aspect of that. Um, I travelled on the Amtrak from Chicago to New Orleans and co-wrote American Demon Hunter's Sacrifice with Jay Thorne, Zach Bahannon and Lindsay Baroka. My short story, The Dark Queen, was published in the Field of Fear anthology, which was a paid story. That's my fourth paid short story. So um, those, I guess, are professionally published in some way. <laughs> Um, I published Map of Shadows, the first in the Map Walkers dark fantasy thriller series that came out just before Christmas and really happy with the way that is going so far. Because cross-genre marketing is so difficult, I decided at the beginning of 2017 to start a new website, supernaturalthrillers.com, and then decided against launching it at the last minute because... Um, well, I just I just didn't have the time. And then in Oregon in October I, or November, whenever it was, I returned to the idea of a genre destination site, possibly around dark travel or something else other than jfpen.com. But, you know, and this idea will not go away. I've been thinking about another podcast, um, but then I just keep thinking that I'd be better off writing more for now. So I've been adding articles that relate to my books on jfpen.com, which has resulted in 
growth in traffic. So that's quite good and more email signups and more people finding my work. So I'm going to continue that in 2018. The Sweet Romance Fiction as Penny Appleton. So although I've been talking about co-writing with my mum openly for some time, I only revealed our pseudonym recently as I wanted to build up clean also boards. Uh, But now we have three contemporary sweet romances and a box set. Uh, We've done ebook print and large print editions and um, I'll be doing a big roundup in April once we've been writing and publishing for a year. But it's as you would expect for a new author. Um, I've set up a new website, pennyappleton.com, which is what I demonstrate in my tutorial. I also set up a Facebook page and essentially all we've done is KDP Select with some free days and some Facebook ads, BookBub ads and an occasional free booksy promo. But it's not an active brand in that we're not doing newsletters or social media or any other kind of promotion. I have too much going on with my two main author names. So Penny has not set the world on fire in terms of sales, but it's only year one. And if you came to me as a first time author and said, oh, I've written three sweet romances under this author name, um, but I'm not making enough money or any money, uh, I'd be like, yeah, go write some more, spend some more time building up some readers. So that's what we're doing. It's making my mum happy and I'm enjoying the challenge of writing in a different genre. Um, So check out Penny Appleton on... um, Amazon because it is KDP Select and also uh, check it out at pennyappleton.com. And if anyone would like to review any sweet romance and you're not in KDP Select, you're welcome to email me for a review copy. Uh, Okay, so health, which I think is really important to talk about and I'm going to keep focusing on that over time because we want to do this for the long term, people. Uh, So writing The Healthy Writer has been a fantastic project. It's really helped focus my mind on my physical health. I often write nonfiction because I need to learn about it. And this year I've definitely progressed health wise. Like writing, it's a lifelong journey, not something you do once and get it sorted forever, but something you practice every day. So I have maintained a consistent yoga practice this year and also uh, have been doing a lot of walking. Um, Obviously, the canal path, which we do a lot, and also have done the 50 kilometre, which is an ultra marathon on the Cotswold Way. And we also did a multi-day walking holiday in the Dolomites in northern Italy. With the help of a hypnotherapist, I have broken the back of sugar addiction and have really changed my diet in the second half of the year. Um, I've also started working with a coach around some of my other health habits. So I'm really looking forward to 2018 where, I've, you know, I've really done a lot of work this year on my health and next year I'm going to take it further. So check out The Healthy Writer, um, which has my letter to sugar, amongst other things, and lots of tips from me and Dr. Ewan Lawson. Okay, so money, goals, there has been growth in the business this year. uh, And I posted a little graph for the last five, six six years on the... um, on the blog post uh, that goes with this, um, but essentially it has not been a step change. It's been a well, it's been a tiny step up, but as it has not been a sort of big jump, a doubling which it was between 2015 and 2016. So I'll break down my um, the income and book sales, etc in May, which is after my end of tax year, which I do every year. Um, But I do continue to be grateful every day to be living at a time in history where a writer can make a multi six figure income online without a publisher. (laughs) So amazing times. And thank you again for being part of my journey. Okay, so that's me done. How did you do with your 2017 goals? You're welcome to come over to the blog and write them down so we can all share and celebrate together. (laughs) 